My dear Bella and Julie and beloved children, have you ever heard of a country called China? It's a great land full of legends and heroes and powerful soldiers and fighters. It is a land where dragons roam and where there's a huge long walk called the Great Wall. Today's main character is a girl from this land of China. Now the interesting thing is. She pretends to be a boy, but why is that? Now get ready to get to know Mulan in this version of the story by Michaela Morgan. Now is the story Mulan by Michaela Morgan. This is Mulan. She's holding a flag. And she's dressed as a warrior. Chapter one. Mulan was working quietly in the corner of the house, just as she did every day. She was at her loom, weaving, weaving, just as she did every day. Shh, shh. Went the shuttles of her loom. It was quiet in the house. Mulan's father, tired and ill, was tossing and turning in his bed. Mulan's mother, busy as ever, was making a meal. Little brother was playing as quietly as little brother could. Shh. Went the shuttles of the loom, but there was another sound. What was it? It was the sound of Mulan sighing as she worked. Hmm, what is it, Father Aster? Why do you sigh, Mother Aster? Are you dreaming of a boyfriend? Are you wishing for new shoes, little brother Aster? He was a cheeky boy and liked to tease his older sister. I'm thinking of the poster I saw in town," said Mulan. She sighed again. "Our country is under attack. We have been ordered to send a man from this family to fight in the emperor's army." The poster said, "War. One man from every family must join the army to fight for the emperor." Chapter two. A man from our family must go to fight. Or we will all be punished," said Mulan's father. "I will do what has to be done." The sick old man tried to struggle to his feet, but he had not even the strength to stand. "You will not last today," cried Mulan's mother. "Your fighting days are over." "I will go instead of father," said little brother. He picked up his tiny wooden sword and pretended to fight his toys, but he whirled his toy wood so quickly that he lost his footing. And fell down. Oof. Mulan looked at her little brother lying in a pile of toys. He was still clutching his toy sword. He was much, much too young to fight for this country. She looked at the father. He was much, much, much too old. True, he had once been a very skilled soldier, but those days were all over, long gone. I am just the right age," she thought. "I can run and ride better than many boys. I can think quickly, and I have helped father practice his fighting skills for years. I should be the one to join the army." Chapter three. Mulan spoke up bravely. "I want to buy a saddle and a horse. I will go to the army in father's place." How little brother laughed. "Silly, silly," he said. "You are only a soppy girl." How Mulan's mother fretted. No, no, no! It's not right. Your place is here with us. Girls are not allowed in the emperor's army. Her father was too tired and sick to say much. He just groaned. No, Mulan, no. Mulan was determined. I have a plan, she said. I will dress like a boy. I wear padding and armor. They will never know that I'm a girl. Impossible, said her mother. Dangerous. Grasped her father, crazy," said little brother. Mulan had made up her mind; she was ready to do anything to save her family. In the East Market, she went to buy a speedy horse. In the West Market, she got a saddle. In the North Market, she got a full set of armor. In the South Market, she got a sword. Chapter four. At home, she tied up her hair and tried on her armor. 
All that night, she practiced her fighting skills and took tips from her father. She no longer looked like Mulan. Now, she looked like a soldier. At dawn, she said goodbye to her father and mother. She climbed on to the back of her speedy horse and rode away. She'll be back by tea time, laughed the little brother. Yet Mulan was not back by tea time that day or the next. Mulan traveled for three days along the banks of the Yellow River. The ground was hard, the air was chill, and the nights were dark and lonely. She missed her family and many times she wished she could go home, but bravely she went on. At dusk, on the third day, she arrived at the army camp at Black Mountain. As Mulan approached, the camp guard appeared, blocking her way. Where are you going? he challenged. Mulan shivered, but she said in a deep voice, I am here to join the army as ordered. The guard nodded. Surprised, Mulan passed quickly into the camp. From that moment on, Mulan lived in fear of her fellow soldiers discovering that she was a girl. Army life was tough, and every day, sights and sounds reminded her of home and her family. The days were long, the nights were longer, the life was harder than hard. Chapter 5 Mulan didn't give up. She worked hard, and she trained hard. She learned how to use a spear, and how to carry a shield. She learned how to attack and defend, and how to ride at the speed of the wind. Soon it was time for the first battle. Mulan's blood ran cold with dread and fear. Her knees shook, her heart pounded, and she clutched the sword tightly and went into the battle. Oh, she was as brave as any soldier, and she was as quick as any runner. And she was clever. She used her sword, but she also used her brain. She outwitted the enemies. She used a spear to leap over her attackers. She danced her way past clumsy attacks. She hid under her shield, then jumped out to take her attackers by surprise. She earned the respect of her fellow soldiers. They still had no idea she was a young girl. They clapped on her back and said, What clever tricks you use. That was the first battle of many. She became a fine warrior. She became a leader. She survived one long year, two years, three years, four, five, and six, and seven years and more. For ten long years, she survived. She traveled far. She rode through great green forest. She rode across red hot deserts. She rode up steep and snowy mountains. She rode one thousand, two thousand, three thousand miles, four, five thousand, six thousand, seven, and more. She traveled ten thousand miles. She kept her hair up, she kept her courage strong, and she kept her secret well. She became a famous officer and led her troops into many successful battles. But every night, she dreamed of going home. Her mother, her father, and little brother. She wondered how they were. Chapter 6 Finally, the war was won. The emperor was pleased with Mulan. You have been brave and true. Ask for any reward, and you can have it. Gold, diamond, palace. Mulan knew exactly what she wanted. I want a fast horse and want my freedom, she said. I want to leave fighting behind and return to my family to live in peace. Her wish was granted. When father and mother heard the sound of horses' hooves, they came out to look. They saw a fine officer riding towards them. It was Mulan, followed by her troop of soldiers. She looked so splendid, riding a fine horse. Little brother ran out to welcome the soldiers and to cheer. Mulan went into the house to her old rooms. She sat at a table, and she took off her armor. She let her hair down, she washed the dust off, she put on her dresses, long and flowing. Then she went out of the door and greeted her troop of soldiers. I am Mulan, she said. Her comrades were amazed. A girl, they shouted. Not possible. It took a bit of explaining, 
before they could believe it. And that... And with that, the soldiers were so amazed that they told Mulan's tale far and wide. The story of how a young girl became a warrior spread from person to person. It crossed mountains and oceans to many different countries. In Mulan's land, people still sing along about her. It is hard to believe that it could be so, but now we have learned, now we know. It is hard to believe that it could be so, but now we have learned, now we know. Not to judge people by how they look, you too can be a hero and have your tale told or put in the book. And that is the end of Mulan by Michaela Morgan.